Chapter 7 Confidence Intervals and Sample Size Chapter 7.1 Confidence Interval for the Mean When Population Standard Deviation Sigma is known or n the sample size is large. When we say large, it means n is either 30 or more than 30. The first thing we need to find is a point estimate. A best point estimate for this type of question is using the sample mean, which is R. The margin of error. Okay, so the margin of error is the, is the maximum likely difference between the point estimate of the parameter and the actual value of the parameter. Last but not least, the confidence interval is a specific interval estimate of a parameter determined by using data obtained from the sample and by using the specific confidence level of the estimate. So here's a formula for finding confidence interval for a specific population mean. So here it is. So this is the, well, we're going to explore that sample mean. That's our point estimate. This whole thing right here. This whole thing right here is called a margin of error. So if you take your sample mean plus minus, plus minus margin of error, you will get an interval, an estimated interval for the population mean derived from the sample mean. Now for the uh, for this symbol right here, this is called a level of confidence. Um, so when the confidence level is 90%, the Z value for, for it is uh, 1.65. If the confidence is 95%, Z value is 1.96, and if it's 99, it's 2.58. Now, later on in the chapter, we're going to teach you how to find these, okay? But these three are the ones that's commonly used, so this will be a nice value to have without looking it up. So what confidence interval is, is like, say, for example, if you want to know what is the average um, number of hour of you know, of people who study for the test for this class. But we don't know what that is. That's unless you interview everybody, right? And I say we don't know what that is. But what you did is instead you asked like say 20, you randomly sample 25 students on campus. So now you have what we call the X bar. So you have the sample mean. They say the sample mean turned out to be like maybe uh, people study like five hours. Okay, then once you find the margin of error, say the margin of error is like say two hours. So the population mean, that means all the students average, you can estimate somewhere between five plus two minus two. So you will say the population mean is somewhere around um, five minus two. So it would be what, three to seven hours. That's the interval we're looking for, three to seven hours. And the sample mean will be right in the middle. That's what confidence look like, confidence interval look like. So your sample mean is here, and your actual mean for all entire population is somewhere between this value and that value. And these red two red lines is what we're looking for. All right, so let's put an example probably, uh, it's, uh, the example you'll see, it's a lot easier than this, okay? So here we go. So let's look at the example. Example one, days to sell an avio. A researcher wish to estimate the number of days it takes an automobile dealer to sell a Chevrolet avio. A sample of 50 cars had a mean time on a dealer's lot of 54 days. So if we sample 50 cars, find out those 50 cars, average number of days uh, sitting on the lot is 54 days. Assume the population standard deviation to be six days. Find the best point of estimate of the population mean and the 95% confidence interval of the population mean. So what we want to find out, well, how about overall? How about all the avios in the world? How long would it take, okay, on average for them to, um, to you know, to, how long do they take usually on the lot? All right, so the, but there's no way we can, you know, look up every single, you know, cars in the world. So we, we're going to use this 50 cars and try to estimate. We we'll try to do a 95% confidence in them to estimate what the population mean is going to be. Sample means it's, it's 54. Population mean is going to be somewhere around there, right? So here's what. So the so the first thing you're going to find is the uh the point of estimate. Again, what's the point of estimate? That's why that's the, the sample mean. Point estimate is the sample mean because that's the starting point. That's what that's a good starting point. So you know, if 50 cars average about 54, chances are most of the cars gonna be somewhere around there because our sample is large enough, right? Okay. All right. So we already have this x bar equal to 54. Now we know the sigma, sigma the, uh, population standard deviation is six, and it's 50. Number 50 cars, and 95% confidence. The z is 1.96. 
That's from before. Where did I get that number? Right here, 1.96. Uh, 1 okay, because 95% of companies. Then all you have to do is take all these numbers, plug in this formula. So X bar is 54, Sigma is 6, N is 50, and this thing right here, that's 1.96. So once we plug in everything, and it's just a matter of using calculator and then find out the numbers. So the way you answer this, you're going to say we are 95% confident that the population mean number of days takes to sell a video is between 52 and 56 days. That's the answer. So you're overall, so we can figure out, uh, we can have a 95. So. Uh, Another way to interpret this will be we're 95% sure that all the cars, all the vehicles in the world will take about uh, 52 to 56 days to sell. Now, if you have a graphing calculator, you press on stat, tests, and then go to Z interval. On the input, you're going to put stats. And all you have to do is put in those numbers, your standard deviation, your mean, your sample size, and what the C level is. It'll give you the same answer. Now let's look at another example. A large department store found that it's um, average 362 customers per hour. Assume that the standard deviation is 29.6 and a random sample of 40 hours was used to determine the average. Find a 99% confidence interval for the population mean. All right, so they want to know on average how many people go to their store. Okay, but they only, they only sample 40 hours. They didn't look at all the hours, right? It's just so many, you know, it's infinite that the store continue going. I mean, it's stored getting close, right? It just, every hour there's a new data. So we really look at the past 40 data and try to estimate what the rest of the data look like. So here's what a population mean will look like. So here it is, use the same formula. We have the mean, the sample mean was 362, the standard deviation 2.58, it has 99% confident. And uh, sigma, that's the population standard deviation is 29.6, and sample size is 40. You plug in the formula, do the same thing, and you arrive the same, uh, you, you get the answer. So we say we are 99% sure, right? We're 99% confident that the mean number of customers in a store is between 350 to 374 customers per hour. Now, we never say 100% confident because we don't have all the data. We all, this, this number, was derived is the best estimate from these 40 samples that we have. If you have the graphing calculator, you do the same thing, stat, test, z interval, input stats, and new data. You have the standard deviation, the mean, number of sample, and uh, 0.99 this time, because they want 99% confidence in you. Yes, and I want now. What if your data, the data they gave you is in um, in raw, you know, raw data, just um in actual data? So the following data represent a sample of assets in millions of dollars of thirty credit unions in southwestern Pennsylvania. Find a ninety percent confidence interval for the mean. So how do you find that ninety percent confidence mean? Now this is just the thirty credit unit out of all the credit units, right? So it's a sample, but we try to estimate what if we we had all the credit unions, what what, what would that mean be? So we're going to guess, we're, we'll do the best estimate of what the mean is going to be, the population mean. We have a sample mean though. So if they give you, um, if you're, you're running into a problem where they didn't just give you mean and standard deviation, just like the other two, then you have to do a little bit of late work. So not just like we learned from chapter, uh, chapter two, chapter three. So the first thing we're going to do is find mean and standard deviation. So take the data and then you know how to find the mean and standard deviation. So you can either use technology or, you know, just uh, simply do it by hand. Then your mean is 11.091, standard deviation 14.405. Now, S and sigma, now notice that our formula used sigma, it didn't use S, right? Because this is what population standard deviation. Now, S and sigma is interchangeable as long as N is 30 or more. So we have 30 data, so we're okay. So S can be replaced with this. So you can use, so in the formula, S can be replaced by this, okay? Or vice versa. Right, so here's our formula again. So we have the mean from the previous slide. We have 1.65 because 90% confidence give you the Z of 1.65. And there's, um, the standard deviation was 14.405, and we have 30 uh, credit union banks data. And once we plug it in, then our, our overall uh, average is somewhere between this and that.
the way we say this will be we're 90 percent confident that the population mean you want to mention the population mean of the assets of all credit unions is somewhere between 6.752 million dollars and 15.430 million dollars if you have a graphing calculator you do the same thing but this time your standard deviation is 14.405 mean is 11.091 and n is 30 and com confidence level is 90. and that's how you find confidence intervals all right now comments on computer and calculator users so you're going to find out often your answer doesn't match up to the back of the book as long as it's close enough okay because if you're using graphing calculators the graphing calculator did, uh, did not use the table value from from table e Table E is, um, if you look at table E, you only have four decimal places. Your calculator can do a lot more than that. And it's, it doesn't run numbers all the way to the end, too. So that's why if you have a small discrepancy, that's okay. All right, now, the last formula we're going to learn is the sample size. Now, we know that we need um, 30 or more to be in order for S, for S or sigma to, to, to be the same and to use what we learned in this section. Now, but how did they determine how many people they should, how many samples they should take? Then for the first one, they decided to look at 50 cars and a lot. And the last question was 30 banks. I mean, how do you know the end? So the minimum size, you, you need to interview or collect enough data in order to do a good estimate. You cannot just look at two credit unit and decide to take the estimate from there. Uh, because there's so much more, right? Okay, so how do we know what's the, what's the minimum sample size we need to do for a particular problem? So this is a formula for it. Okay, you are the so we're looking for n this time. Okay, so n is unknown, but you already know what this is that depends on the confidence interval that's standard deviation, and e is the margin of error. Okay, so this type of question they'll tell you what the margin of error is. So, all right, so if you take a look, here's an example a scientist wishes to estimate the average depth of a river, he wants to be 99% confident that the estimate is accurate within two feet. So, that's e margin of error plus minus two feet. On a previous study, the standard deviation of the depth measured to be 4.33. How large the a sample is required? So you have this two point. Oh, that's so sorry about the typo. This 2.58. What's 2.58? 2.58 is um is a Z for 99 percent, and E is two because you want to be within two feet plus minus, and then so that's what E is, and the standard deviation 4.33. If you just plug in this and do a square, then you get 31.2. Now remember, that's the minimum. So we, in order to get sample, you cannot get decimal set samples. So you always run this up to the next uh, whole number. So the minimum. So therefore, to be 99% confident that the estimate is within two feet of the true mean depth, the scientists need to at least uh, uh, take a sample of 32 measurements. And that's how we know how many measurements we need to take before we try to find the confidence interval. Now, last but not least, for those of you who do not use graphing calculator, here, um, so what if our confidence interval is anything other than 90, 95, or 99%? So for example, if the question asks you for a 98% confidence interval, now graphing calculator, you just need, at a C level, you just need to put this number, 0 0.98, and you're done. But if you don't have a graphing calculator, you have to do a little bit of work. You need to go back to table E. So how do you do confidence interval? So whatever number that you see here, all right, so you need to add, so this is A, a minus 2. So what happened is this. Remember, confidence interval means this right in the middle. So that, if, that means 98 here. Now, if 98 here, they got to be one from each side, right? Okay. So this this red bar here, not this one, this red bar here is what your Z is. So all you have to do is take, well, that's 98% here plus the last bit of 1%. So that's why you look up 0.99. So on the table E, you look at the closest number to 0.99. So it's 98% plus the little bit here. Now, how do you know it's here again? Because it's 1% each to make up 100. So it depends on what this number is, then you just need to make sure you find out what are um, the asymmetrical. So whatever the both side value is, so it'll be this number plus the little bit, and that number you look up in the table E. And if you look outwards, in this case, 98% confidence interval, Z will equal to 2.33. And that's what you use uh, to plug in the formula.